Rollins Castle Heritage Centre would like to invite you on this tour of our village, including its rich heritage and the attractive, historically interesting surrounding areas. Rollins Castle is now home to around 3,000 people, is located in South East Hampshire, abutting West Sussex, and is on the edge of the South Downs National Park. It has been continuously inhabited since Roman times and almost certainly before then. In Roman times there stood here some large villas, possibly servicing agricultural needs. The village is surrounded by the green spaces of Stansted Forest, Staunton Park and Haven't Thicket. This map shows some of the surrounding areas including Old Idsworth and Cholton Down. A long-standing resident of the village has the responsibility of raising the flag over the green to commemorate any number of events of importance. The village has two churches, St John the Baptist on Red Hill Road, shown here, and the church on the green, which was first developed about 200 years ago. The main part of the modern structure is more recent and was partly funded by the Canning family of Finchdean. The parish hall was built in 1914 and includes a stage. It is home to innumerable village activities. Probably the most characteristic feature of Rowlands Castle is the attractive village green. Before the war there were many local shops, some of which have now closed and been converted for residential use. However, we still have a good range of local facilities around the green, including a convenience store, hardware store, post office, a garage, pubs, a general practice and a pharmacy. There's also the Bumblebee Cafe, often used by cyclists to ride in the South Downs National Park. The castle pub shown here was built in 1853. The old White Hart Ale House, which occupied a site nearby, was associated with the notorious Hawkehurst gang of smugglers. In 1748, two customs officers inadvisably went for a drink there and shortly after met their death at the hands of the gang. The Roland Castle Railway Station was built in 1859. It was designed by Sir William Tate and is Grade 2 listed. The track goes from Portsmouth to Waterloo. Originally of fundamental importance for local brickworks, it is now very useful for commuters to London or Portsmouth who live in the village. Any number of events take place on the green, but the annual Rowlands Castle Fair, which started in 1973, is the biggest. Local organisations display their activities and there is food, drink, music and much to do for children and adults alike. Fairs selling cattle and horses in May and November took place in Rowlands Castle for centuries, but these ceased in the late 19th century. The golf course originated in 1902. Initially it was nine holes, but it was later extended and became of championship length in 1969. The clubhouse was rebuilt in the 1980s. The course is built on ground subject to swallow holes from underground streams. A small oak tree apparently once disappeared into one. This drone photograph shows the course of the Lavant River. It is normally dry, but in wet winters it can emerge, usually arising in the vicinity of Idsworth Church. From there it flows through Rowlands Castle, sometimes making Woodbury Lane impassable. Motorists who try to cross the ford at these times often need rescuing by a local hall's garage. For the past 40 years, the Rowlands Castle Association has put on an annual firework display, much to the delight of locals and those from afar. The money raised is donated for good causes. These are images of the remains of a Mott and Bailey castle. 
one of the questions often asked is, where did Rowlands Castle get its name? The answer is, we don't know. But shortly after the Norman invasion in 1066, a wooden Martin Bailey castle was built on land now in the private garden of Deerleap. It is possible that the Martin Bailey castle was built on an earlier Anglo-Saxon fortress, which in turn had been built over the Roman villa. The castle was in good repair in the 12th century, when Henry II spent several days there whilst hunting in the forest of Bia, and in 1381 the castle was documented under the name Rolok Castle. It doesn't take much imagination to see how this word could be transformed into our modern day Rowlands Castle. The castle was abandoned in the 15th century and the mot or mound was severely truncated when the Victorians cut through it when building the railway in 1859. What remains of it is now a scheduled monument, though not open to the public. The first school in Rowlands Castle was largely funded by charitable donations. The original building still stands, but is no longer a school. A larger school was rebuilt nearby in 1975. Bricks were fabricated using the abundant local clay during Roman times, but it wasn't until the 1880s that the Rowlands Castle Brickworks was established. At its height, the brickworks employed over a hundred workers. The brickworks were closed in 1968, but the remains of clay pits can still be seen, and some of the bricks from the brickworks are preserved in the nearby Burzeldon Brick Museum. The characteristic RC stamp can be seen on the bricks. During World War II in 1944, Rowlands Castle was chosen as an area where Allied troops prepared for the D-Day landing. The green was covered in bomb-damaged brick rubble from Portsmouth, the tanks were lined up on the green, and the soldiers encamped all around, including Canadian troops, in the woods around Stansted House. The scene, including the village green with surrounding houses and businesses, the troops, the forest, the tanks and the railway, have all been lovingly recreated by master modeler Peter Goss. It took him several years, along with his wife, to build the model and he then displayed it around the country and abroad before selling it to the Rowlands Castle Heritage Centre in 2017 with funds raised by locals, and since when it has been regularly displayed for all to see. It's a truly marvellous piece of work. St Hubert's Church stands alone amid the fields of Old Idsworth. It was probably built in the 9th century by Earl Godwin. It may well have been built on an early religious site dating back to Roman or pre-Roman times. The church is now dedicated to St Hubert, the patron saint of hunters. Of particular significance is a mural painted around 1330 and rediscovered in 1864. From the church, there are magnificent views of the Hampshire countryside. Nearby is Staunton Country Park. It is a listed Regency landscape parkland and forest of approximately 1,000 acres. George Staunton bought Lee Park House in 1820 and landscaped the garden in a Chinese style as was fashionable at that time. He later sold the property to William Stone who demolished it and built a magnificent house on the hill in 1865. Sadly, this property was bulldozed in 1959. The layout of the building has been carefully preserved and other features remain, including the arches under the terrace, the lake and follies like the temple and the Chinese bridge. The park is now an attractive recreational area. Stansted House and Park are set in 1,800 acres, much of which is wooded. 
The park is crossed by the Monarch's Way, the escape route taken by Charles II in 1651. The original building was possibly a hunting lodge dating back to the 11th century and belonging to the powerful Earl of Arundel. The subsequent grand buildings were visited by, amongst others, Richard I, Elizabeth I and George III. The main block was destroyed by fire in 1900 and was rebuilt in the style of Wren in 1903. The interior has a de restoration decor and is Grade 2 listed. The current owners are the Besborahs and the property is now under a charitable trust. In the grounds there is a lodge, attractive gardens and in spring beautiful bluebells. Entertainment also includes a light railway. Finally, there's St Paul's Chapel, which was built in the mid-1800s by the Reverend Lewis Way. It is Grade 1 listed and contains a unique east window with Christian and Jewish iconography and Hebrew tablets of the Ten Commandments. John Keats attended the consecration service. There is so much I haven't included in this brief presentation, but there is much more information on the Rowlands Castle Heritage website, or even better, come and see Rowlands Castle for yourself.